Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and your continuing series, Sega Racing Renaissance, where we review every single 3D arcade Sega Racing game ever made in a retrospective fashion. And since we're going over some real concrete racing games from Sega, we're going to mix it up and have some fun with Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. Now there is a sequel to this game, Transformed, and you will not be seeing it on this series because it never got an arcade release and the rules are the rules on this one. Before we get to far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But this is just Sega's version of Mario Kart, and it is really good, and I love those chow waving flags there. Just like in Mario Kart, pretty much everything from the Sonic universe is going to be jammed into this game, along with some other popular Sega franchises. And outside of taking a bad first turn there, this game is spectacular. When it is doing everything well, I would say it's as good as Mario Kart, or slightly less by 1 or 2%, but leave me a comment down below and tell me if you think I'm crazy for saying that. But this is just Sega's Mario Kart, and it's damn fun. You get the drifting mechanics, you get the boost the longer you drift, all of those things that you saw in Mario Kart 8. But this was a little bit earlier, and I do love that even Billy Hatcher is here, and he gets his own stage, something that you wouldn't expect that I will show you guys shortly. But since we've been talking about so many straight racing games, things like OutRun, things like World Driver Championship, if I keep the schedule the way I plan it, this is kind of a fun break from that. Because even though it's more of a competitive Mario Kart style game, it still has laps, it still has places, and it's still a racing game. And I am playing the arcade version here versus the consoles, which doesn't really matter whatsoever except I was being stringent on the rules when I captured this. But I love all the power-ups as well, all the different rockets and speed boosts you get. You'll see I just got hit by one there. This is your classic rubber banding. The further you are up in the ranks, the worse power-ups you're going to get. And sometimes the screen just flips upside down in its head. Good thing it started right near the finish because that is really hard to transpose the controls when it happens to you. But moving on to another course, this set in the Jet Set Radio Future universe, it's just so much fun. And having Eggman here in his gigantic cart, each car has a different control scheme. This is very heavy, but it's going to allow you to bump so many people out of the way. This is an awesome game to play, but don't play it like I do against the computer. You need friends, so just get it for the console, play it with your friends. You're going to have a ton of fun. It puts the same smile on your face that Mario Kart would, and obviously I'm going to keep bringing Mario Kart up because it's the most comparable game. But I love Sega. I grew up with Sega. I had a Genesis before I had a Super Nintendo. So the franchising and getting all these different Sega series to have their own courses actually makes me a little happier than playing Mario Kart. And don't get me wrong, I own every single Nintendo console ever made at this point in time. But I grew up with Sonic, so to see all of this going on and being able to race as Eggman around this course is just such a fun time. I'm always going to enjoy my time with this game. Now, if there's one thing that I would say that they don't do as well as Nintendo, and honestly, competing with Nintendo sometimes is really difficult, is while the courses are a ton of fun, they're probably not as creative on the layout side as something like Mario Kart 8 is. Sure, you get this gigantic massive jump and it looks spectacular, but honestly, you can't not land it because it's a giant wide open road. Sometimes it doesn't give me the same challenge factor in the courses, but there are some harder ones coming up shortly that I will show you. But that's kind of just how it works with this game. It's not maybe as technically impressive as Mario Kart, but it is so close, and if you love Sonic, you're going to have a spectacular time with it. And like I said earlier, there's multiple ways to play this game. You can totally play it on your Windows PC, just with something like Techno Parrot, like I'm doing here, and play the arcade version. Or you can just make it easy on yourself and buy it for a console. But old Eggman took the checkered flag, and you usually get first, second, or third against the AI. It's not the hardest thing in the world, but you have to kind of be on top of stuff. And we're going to move over to Sonic the Hedgehog pinball this is kind of a sonic adventure feeling level to me and you get ii -I in his banana cart but the soundtrack's a ton of fun as well so go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds and i will be right back Joe, there's a little pig there! 
The soundtrack is fun, it's bright, it's cheery, and a little cartoony, exactly what you'd expect out of the Sonic and Sega universe. And now we're getting into some courses that do give you a little bit more challenge and do a few more things like inverting gravity or letting you really drift around these long turns. And that's what I meant when I said that when this game's at its best, I think it's as good as Mario Kart, but a few of the tracks don't feel like they reach that level. But using Ai here in his banana cart is just so much fun because he's a small character, his drift is a lot more nimble, and his steering's a lot quicker. But of course, there are obstructions on the course, and I just hit one of Dr. Eggman's robot buddies there, and you can screw yourself over. Making a mistake in this game, just like in any other kart racing game, it's going to cost you. You need to race almost a perfect race and also get lucky by not having too many power-ups hit you because you'll see there you just got knocked from third place to fifth place that quickly. Sometimes you're going to lose a race and it's not going to be fair, but that's just endemic to this genre. The AI is always going to rubber band you, but sometimes you get some good power-ups and you're able to make it back into maybe that podium position or one of the characters you're racing against makes a mistake and lets you pop into second versus third there. It's always wild, there's always something different going on, and the flag waver is Knights from Knights into Dreams. I'm surprised he's not actually somebody you can race as unless there's a hidden character I'm not aware of, but there's definitely some omissions here. I'm surprised somebody like Samba from Samba de Amigo made it in, but Knights just holds the flag. It kind of feels a little bit unfair because if I had to pick a game, I would pick Knights over Samba de Amigo, but again, leave me a comment down below which one would you rather have. But the courses are a ton of fun, and I love how stylistically they're always different, although I wish this game had a little bit of that Sonic Colors vibe going on with some dessert stages. And the sequel to this game is quite good, and maybe possibly even a better game, but again, the rules are rules. I can't talk about it because it never came out in arcades, and I'm kind of surprising. Sega must not have had great sales with this in the arcade, or else they probably would have brought that game to arcades, at least in Japan as well. But again, just this drift, all of the boosting mechanics, when you get that drift and you lock it in and you take that corner perfectly and you see that color on the side of your car, in this instance the back, get to that purple and you release that, you pop right back into second place. Holding that drift and keeping it there is really important. Now some characters like Ulala here and her spaceship, they hover and they drift really well but they've got a real sense of float to them. If you like this car, it's going to be your favorite. If you don't like how it controls, you're going to absolutely hate it and never go back to it again. But that's the great thing. Every single character has their own unique handling style for the most part. And once you actually find a character and vehicle that you like playing as, you're going to learn the entire game as them. And learning the courses is super important because you can't do anything about the AI and the rubber banding, but knowing where your turns are and how you want to drift into them and where you want to start at the apex is going to give you a better shot at winning versus just going in blind. But again, I can't stress enough, this is the type of game that becomes infinitely more fun with friends. But of course, with these captures, I don't have anybody around next to me. My wife is at work, so you just gotta have to watch me play it as a one-player game. But it is just so much fun, and it plays like pretty much no other Sega Arcade Racing game. It's not really like OutRun, it's not really like Daytona, it's its own thing. And something like going through the House of the Dead level and being able to run Ryu's motorcycle right into Dr. Kirin's mansion, it's just amazing. Because I love so many of Sega's games outside of the arcade racing properties, so being able to see my favorite light gun game of all time, The House of the Dead, in a Sega arcade racing game is a lot of fun. It doesn't exactly fully resemble the same mansion, obviously it's a racing game, not a light gun game, so there are definitely some artistic liberties taken, but if you're a fan of the Sega universe, you're going to find something to enjoy here. If you're a fan of Billy Hatcher, one of Sega's deepest cut games in my opinion, he even gets a race course and I was really surprised by that because I thought something like Knights would have made its way into the first game, but it just didn't. But again, Sega always makes amazing games and they had help with this one. Not every single game on this series is 100% made by Sega. They do have third party developers work with them from time to time. But Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing is just an absolute blast, and it is so much more fun when you have friends. Just like Mario Kart, when you've got some intense action going on, you're all having a good time, maybe at a few beers, and your friends are hitting you with power-ups, so you're knocking them from first place down to fourth. That's when this game really comes alive, but I do stand by the statement that when this game is doing everything correctly and the courses are well designed, it is as much fun as playing Mario Kart 8. And honestly, Nintendo hasn't given us a new Mario Kart in a while, so this may be a little more fun because maybe you haven't played it in a bit. 
But short of that, I will be back next Wednesday with another episode in Sega Racing Renaissance, and I'll have videos throughout the week as well. But if even if you're not into the Sonic universe, even if you just like kart racing games, give this one a try because I guarantee you're going to like it. We will see you next time. I got fourth. Bye-bye.